Welcome to Astro Academy Principia. Featuring astronaut Tim Peake on board the International Space Station, Sophie Allen on the ground in the experiment room, and myself, Anu Ojar, at the National Space Academy. Here on the surface of the Earth, we're living at the bottom of an ocean of gases extending for hundreds of kilometres above our heads and keeping us under pressure. But what do we mean by pressure? Let's consider an imaginary column of atmosphere with a cross-sectional area of one square metre. Now, the Earth's gravity field acts on the entire column of gases, giving it weight. Pressure is defined as being the force acting on each square metre of a surface. So the sea level atmospheric pressure of around 100 kilopascals or 1,000 millibars means that each square metre of ground at sea level is supporting the weight of about 10 tonnes of gases above it. And the higher we go in the atmosphere, the lower the pressure becomes because we're supporting less weight of atmosphere above us. Because the atoms and molecules that make up gases are free to move in all directions, the pressure exerted by gases is also in all directions, and this can lead to spectacular consequences. In this demonstration, I'm going to fill my glass with water, place a piece of card on top of the glass, and, holding the card in place, I turn the cup upside down. When I release the card, instead of getting drenched, the card stays in place. How can understanding pressure help explain what's going on? This box contains lots of beads, each representing the atoms or molecules in a real gas. In a real gas, those atoms or molecules will be moving in all directions. This is a demonstration of the 3D kinetic theory of gases, and we have a box here with a number of metal ball bearings in it, and one white ball in it as well. Um, and I'm going to impart a, a velocity in three dimensions onto these ball bearings and uh, see what effect it has in microgravity. Here we go. And when I do so, we have random movements in all directions and at a range of different bead velocities. Now, the temperature of a gas is a measure of the average kinetic energy of the gas atoms or molecules. And so, me shaking the box more vigorously corresponds to increasing the gas's temperature through some sort of heat transfer process. In Sophie's demonstration, the billions of tiny collisions every second between individual gas molecules and the underside of the card means that the gases in the air underneath the card are exerting a significant upward force on the card, enough to support the weight of the water, which is acting downwards. The surface tension between the water and card is also a factor in explaining fully what's going on in Sophie's demo on the behaviour of gases. There's one final demonstration that clearly shows another aspect of the behaviour of real molecules. Here we have a mass oscillating on the end of a spring. It's oscillating around its equilibrium position, with a period that depends on the size of the mass and the stiffness or spring constant of the spring. This is a classic example of simple harmonic motion, or SHM. During a single oscillation, there is a constant interchange between potential and kinetic energy. The displacement, velocity and acceleration experienced by the mass during a single cycle all show sinusoidal behaviour. And the resultant force acting on the mass and therefore its acceleration, is proportional to the displacement of the mass from its equilibrium position and directed towards that point at all times. The dynamics of SHM behaviour can be reproduced by looking at the motion of an object moving in a circle at constant speed and reducing this to one plane of observation. If we look at the motion of the ball rolling around the track from the side, the observed motion of the ball in this plane replicates the dynamic conditions we associate with simple harmonic motion. But how does this relate to gases? 
In this demonstration, the two balls I'm holding represent the atoms in a gas molecule, and the spring represents the covalent chemical bond that binds the two atoms together. When I push the balls inward and release them, we can see that they oscillate in and out with a period, and therefore frequency, that depend on the masses of the balls and the spring constant, or stiffness, of the spring. Real molecules of a gas behave in a similar manner. To a first approximation, they are harmonic oscillators, whose frequencies depend on the masses of the atoms and the strength of the chemical bonds within the molecules. And just like the sweets in Tim's plastic sphere, gas molecules can also show rotational behaviour around X, Y and Z axes and with a multitude of specific angular velocities. And using the technique of infrared spectroscopy combined with telescopic observations, this behaviour of gas molecules can be analysed to give us new insights into the chemical compositions of materials elsewhere in the solar system, in comets, in planetary atmospheres, and further still, in the giant interstellar gas clouds from which new stars are born.